Hello, thanks for joining me today. Today I'm going to be doing a compositional sketch for a painting I plan to do in the next couple of days. And I'm doing this just so that I can work out how I want my painting to look before I actually mess around with paint. So these are, what, these are examples of how it should look or what I'm aiming for. But at the moment I've just started with a rough value sketch without any details really. I'm going to do a New York scene that I've never attempted before. And in fact, I'm going to merge two pictures because I like this image, especially the lights down there and the luminosity and how, just the general composition really. Although I'd like to include the Empire State Building which isn't in the original one, so I'm somehow going to integrate that into that. And I'm also going to edit out the trees. Because although I want to be true to the scene, I want to arrange the composition in a more pleasing way, or, or at least a way that's more achievable for me to do the painting that I want to do. So that's what I'm going to try and do. This is also, incidentally, the first time I've recorded myself or had to do commentary whilst I draw or paint. I'm going to start off with a fairly blunt pencil to keep it loose, just drawing out the major shapes, and then I'll change to a sharper mechanical pencil when I want to stick to finer lines. I've also drawn a grid out here to help me um, get a bit more precision. So going back to the photo, I've already had a rough idea of how I'm going to integrate the Empire State Building into that picture. I'm going to keep basically everything except that top third. So that sketch will help me out. Let's get on with it. So I'm basically looking at the easiest marks to put down first with the least mount of risk to make mistakes. And to be honest, at the moment I'm just looking at that because that's the rough plan and I can put in details looking at the other photos later. I'm keeping that Empire State Building halfway as the centre. Also, I am splitting my painting, as I do with all, into thirds because odd numbers are more attractive than even numbers when it comes to composition, I find. and. Um, Keeping something in each of the thirds, for example, the Empire State Building is in that third, going down the car is in that third, the vanishing point or the centre where everything zones into is in that third. I'm sure compositions can still work without them being in thirds, but I find when I'm laying out designs, just having that in mind can affect my decision.
there's room for mistakes when you're using this pencil when you're at this stage because I'm only touching lightly these aren't permanent Vanishing point is here, or roundabouts. So whenever I have a building edge or a billboard, I try and aim it towards that. It makes everything a bit more collected and unifies things a bit. Gives a sense of direction, something to lead the eye. Hopefully as I get more experience with recording and talking, I'll be able to speak much more fluently while I talk. But really at the moment I think it's just as valuable to watch as anything I can say because one of the reasons I decided to start YouTube was to force me to actually consciously think about what I'm doing because really it just comes as a kind of impulse rather than a conscious thought so being made to talk about it really enables me to cement these ideas and work them out for myself really. Also, there's a useful feature of um, speeding up the video in the settings in the bottom right hand corner and you can alter the speed if you get bored and you can see the progress much faster. goes a bit further down than that. So the top that's where the, the 
buildings will end. There'll be some people here. Possibly flags there. That's where the car will start. Come around there. Down there. So yeah, very simple at this stage, just using, using that circle to represent the car. Then I'll add perspective to it later. Okay, I'm going to move over to my finer mechanical pencil. Rotate it to get a better line. Easier to draw a straight line rather. I think actually this pencil is too fine, so I'm going to go to a, a slightly thicker one. When it comes to more important details, then I'll go back to that thinner one, like figures or cars. I was thinking of just doing time-lapse videos with music put on top, but I think even if I don't say much, it's still a better direction to do it like this, to do it like this, because sometimes, sometimes, um, thoughts pop in my head which I feel like make sense and I've got to articulate them and record them or share, share them that might be useful for other people to hear. Nothing new or revolutionary, just f things that I've heard from other artists that I've never really understood and then through coming across something whilst painting, I discover it, so discover it for myself. Once I get the hang of recording in YouTube, I'll get into more instructive videos that are solely to do with teaching and lessons. At the moment, I'm just doing the paintings I already plan to do, but try and add a new level to it, like, like, um, Try and share my process, I guess. Because some people have requested a bit of commentary, even if it might not be that useful at the moment.
about that. So I'm not going to do any tones in this drawing, values, that's all on that one. might seem quite pointless or not very valuable to watch a sketching video rather than a painting video but really I find the more I improve my sketching well basically sketching is fundamental to painting it's like without me working it out in pencil like this I'll never be able to sketch it out on the actual watercolour pa pa paper and do a good job of it. This is, this is the, almost the harder work of the painting, the planning that goes in before it, because watercolour painting is so unpredictable that you have to be quite impulsive when you're painting it. So you have to plan out the situation beforehand. I guess this video isn't really to watch the whole way through. It's more like to skip to parts to see which parts interest you personally. Flag a bit more detailed.
I'm not yet sure whether I'm going to upload this before or after the painting. If the painting doesn't turn out well, then I probably won't upload it at all. But I think I'll probably upload it after because people may not want to watch the sketch if they don't know how the painting turns out. And if the painting turns out well, they might want to see how I came, I developed the composition or the idea of it. Adds more context to this, I guess. Now, this line should really be heading towards the vanishing point there. Although, I noticed while I was sketching this one that for some reason it looked a bit weirder that way. So I kind of broke the rules of what you're meant to do for that. And I guess you have to do that sometimes. There's no set rules sometimes. They're more like guidelines. Um, I mean, that might come back to bite me later, but I like the silhouette of I like the idea of doing some dry brush trees in the distance and I want to keep that silhouette of them so I'm going to split the buildings a bit further just so I can have that This section will come down and join the trees there. That'll be this building will be on the same level as the trees. That'll be slightly lighter in the distance. So, 
and put this piece of paper there so I didn't smudge the rest. Bring that billboard down. This billboard here that I'm doing there won't have much detail on it, but it'll pop um, a bit opportunity to pop some brightness into the otherwise darkness of that area. Some contrast. I plan these things, but they don't they don't necessarily make their way into the painting. If mistakes happen in the painting, then I have to go with the flow and so, yeah. I don't yet feel I have control of the medium enough to get everything the way I want it, but I think that's the nature of growing, I think that's a constant thing. The more I improve, the more I'll demand of myself, and then it's a constant evolution. In the photo, there's a lot of different details on the buildings, in the shadows, in the lights. But when it comes to the actual painting and the planning for it, I'm not going to draw those, all those details down. The darknesses, I'm going to, min I'm going to basically minimise the lights, the, va the values, and the darks. I'm going to simplify them almost I'm going to keep them dark and then I'm going to use random textures in the painting to imply the detail rather than actually putting the detail down so all this will be dark I don't need to really draw any detail in here because When it comes to the painting, I'm just going to be impulsive. I'm going to use textures that create details that, although there there needs to be some kind of detail there, it's not important how um, it's not important with how unique the, t the details are. They could be anything as long as they're the right feeling that you want to convey. They're just random shapes, even in reality, even in the photo. They're obscure shapes. They don't need to be recognised as something in particular. Except, of course, the people and the cars. does help to have the details facing the vanishing point though. I think this video would be more worthwhile to watch after you've seen me do the painting, after the painting video, because the things that I'm drawing are not that ob obvious in the state that they are now. They're more clear 
seeing them through the finished painting, even though I haven't done it yet, obviously. take this and start to rub away those lines because I don't need them anymore, I've already mapped everything out. This putty rubber is good for rubbing out smudges, things that on the things that are or marks that are on the very surface of the paper, but I need to use a rougher, harder rubber to get in to the grooves. In fact, I'm going to use this um, mechanical rubber. This is by no means a finished piece, nor will, it be, nor will it be, and it's not meant to be. This is not meant to be an artwork of itself, this is just a plan. That might make it a bit more boring or less incentive to watch. So this drawing here is useful for the tones, you've got to work out the tones first really before you deal with line work or edges, or well, edges are related to the tones and you can refine your edges or line work depending on where you choose the tones to be. I wouldn't have been able to do this drawing before doing that one. And even in this one, this line one I'm doing now, when it comes to the painting, I won't stick to all the lines. I'll keep some of them broken. I'll have soft edges on them. I'll lose the edges, lost, lost edges. 
I'll imply the directions, but I won't keep them so clear, clean cut. I'll keep them a bit more ambiguous. I mean, if you could leave comments saying exactly how um, I could make these videos a bit more useful, that would be fantastic because I'm kind of just guessing at what might be useful and what might not be useful. I could address certain topics in future videos. Also on the presentation, um, as I'm a beginner to this medium of recording and explaining my work process, it feels very strange. So. Um, if you give me feedback on how I can make it a bit more enjoyable or useful, that would be ideal. These little circles, dots I'm putting here, will be lights of various colours. I'll use masking fluid to do that, although I feel very uncomfortable doing it because I'm worried they'll destroy my brushes. Well, they, they do, but if it's got to be done, it's got to be done. but it's the only way to create such a vivid effect with scattered lighting like that. This bit looks quite bare in this drawing, but that's because it's less reliant on line work and more reliant on tones. So, it will be very dark at the bottom and it will gradually come lighter. But I can't really describe that with line. So it looks a bit boring. So when I'm drawing this car, even though I'm following the picture of it, I'm imagining my line, I'm, first of all, I'm simplifying in my mind the shape of the car into a rectangle or a cube. And then when I draw these lines, I draw these lines in perspective to that cube.
or at least I try to. This should be level, so I'll bring that down. And this should be that wheel should be level with the other back wheel. But to be honest, when it comes to the painting, it would be a bit more abstract or at least it would be less defined so I won't have to be so reliant on the details If you're watching this far into the video, I really do appreciate your support because this is the first video of this kind I'm uploading specifically this long as well. did some shading then but on purpose I'm leaving shading out because I'm forcing it forcing to convey what I want to convey without using tone okay that's the car and the buildings where the floor where the ground meets the buildings will be there Go on there. I might carry that shadow further actually. It's a highlight there from some kind of building. Um, some figures here. But even in the picture, they're really not that clear. So I don't need to draw them in much detail. There's one particular person that stands out. When I draw the figures, I don't draw one and then move to the next. I move around all of them at the same time. It helps to keep them, it helps keep them unified. I feel like I overuse that word, but I only use that word because I hear all the top watercolor masters using the same word. 
holds everything together, every everything together. Another lorry coming out there. Draw some random shapes on there. Just implying that it's not just blank, but without taking any focus towards it really. Enough detail to make it not obvious. It's, it was much easier to draw one solid line and then rub out to keep them all synchronized than to separately draw one and then the other and then the other. Some more road marking there. I'm going to have to do a straight line here. There we go. And I don't trust my ability to do another line so close to the other one that fast, so I'm going to have to do it slowly, even though it looks a bit sloppier. A car here. Just enough detail people to know that it's a car. Bit of a gap there with random lights and a larger car here. So, as I said at the beginning, I've never done a city scene like New York before. Never done a New York city scene. I've done town scenes, even over cities, but not skyscrapers, not the hustle and bustle of such a big city. Really, just because I haven't done it before doesn't mean that it shouldn't mean rather that uh, it's going to be more difficult than any other painting as long as it's got the elements that worked for me in the past and I'm comfortable with it and confident then ideally it should work out okay when the painting arrives Sorry for the noise that suddenly started. It's the end of siesta here. Gonna add some shadows coming up across there. I 
was tempted to put a shadow across there, but I'm going to stick to that there and just not do that. I'm going to keep keep that going down there, and then with the paint, I'm kind of mm, gradient it across. Um, I think I'm going to put. Separate crossing there. I'm putting way too many lines or whatever they're they called, white markings, road markings in this bit. I'll never be able to do that during the actual paint because it's too intricate. While, while the wash will be coming down with the paint, it's too intricate to get it so refined before the paint starts to dry. So I will have to correct that when it comes to painting. But for the, that's part of the reason I'm doing this sketch to work out those things now rather than when I'm doing the painting itself. Well, we're coming close to the end here. I may or may not put a person here, well not here, but crossing but let me think I don't think I will in the end. Got some figures here, car going down there, can't put a person here. Good. Now I have to decide that in between now and when I do the painting. I'm going to put a couple of birds here. enough. Rub out. The rest of the lines. Oh, no, I forgot to put... I forgot to put this, um... Second traffic light. Yeah, yeah. That's a bit too thick. I'll just leave it single lined.
think that will do for now. I'll show you the two pictures. So. see if that, there we go. So we used that section for the bottom half, side of the buildings here. Then I added that building, the Empire State Building, Could add those people. No, for the time being, I'll leave it as is. Thank you very much for joining me, and until next time.